Yeah, we own um, blood supply to the GIT, okay? Blood supply to the gastrointestinal system, okay? And um, first of all, before we describe the anatomical um, arrangement of blood um, supply to the gastrointestinal system, let's first of all talk about the functions of this blood supply to the GIT, okay? And here we could see that um, the same note as we had in blood, okay? Um, the supply of what oxygen and nutrients to the gut. Definitely the cells of the GIT will need oxygen and nutrients, okay? And it also drains what waste products of metabolism. You know, they are actively moving, moving motility, they are absorbing this, they are doing what, okay? So there will be a whole lot of waste products in the gastrointestinal tract, okay? And these are drained by the blood supply. It also serves as a source of fluid secreted by the gut, okay? So um, this blood actually brings in the fluid, okay? Maybe hormones or everything, okay? Anything fluidy that is secreted by the gut is actually transported to the gut by the what's blood supply. Okay, and I also carry uh, the absorbed nutrients from the gut to general circulation. You know that your gut, especially the small intestine, are actually absorbing um, what you digest from the food you eat, okay? So um, what, what, what transport these nutrients? What transport these nutrients? It's still the blood that transports these nutrients, okay? So guys, um, this is the tip of the iceberg of blood supply. And I'd like you guys to note inferior mesenteric um, artery. I'd like you guys to also note the superior mesenteric artery. You can see that from here too, uh, they are in bold, okay? That's to tell you that um, the major blood supply is from them and their branches, okay? And uh, you guys should also note the celiac trunk, okay? So now we'll be moving into the real lecture of the blood supply to the gastrointestinal tract. So blood supply to the gastrointestinal tract is far greater than that which is required to meet its needs, okay? So the blood supply to the GIT is so abundant, okay? Now, um, since the magnitude of secretion and absorption varies in relation to the meals, blood supply uh, to the gut also varies widely, okay? So there are some food that you take that you really need so much um, effort in digesting them, okay? You know that there will be much more blood supply. But there are some food that uh, when you take them, you don't need um, excess effort in digesting them, okay? Like um, when you take in carbohydrate, this, uh, you don't take in a sufficient water, there will be excess effort in digesting it. But when you take in fruits, you find out that you defecate so frequent, okay? And also, a blood flow to the mucosa is higher and shows greater variation than the blood um, than the flow through the, mu the the muscle. Okay, so this is just talking about the layers of the of GIT. You know that the layers of the GIT, um, the mnemonics is what MS MS. Um, the first one is the word mucosa. Second one is the sub mucosa, followed by the um, uh, muscularis and the serosa. So here they are saying that blood flow to the mucosa layer is higher. Okay, and shows greater variation than the blood flow through the muscular layer. Okay, so guys, I'm just still back on the blood supply. So now let's talk about the anatomical arrangement. This is when this image comes into play. Okay, so the GI tract and associated structure receive their blood supply from three branches of iota. Okay, now first of all, we have the celiac axis where I told you guys. Um, to note the celiac trunk here, okay, celiac trunk or the celiac axis, okay. So um, the celiac axis sends arteries to the liver, stomach, and the spleen, okay. They are about the superior mesenteric artery, okay. This supplies the pancreas, uh, the small intestine, and part of the large intestine, okay. They are supplied by the superior mesenteric artery. Now let's locate the pancreas, small intestine, and everything. Okay, so um, superior mesenteric artery, you see the small intestine, you can see the pancreas, okay, and everything. And um, it supplies um, parts, okay, parts of the large intestine, but it supplies the whole of the small intestine, okay. Then how about the inferior mesenteric artery? This supplies the remaining parts of the large intestine, okay. So now let's trace um, the inferior mesenteric artery. Let's see, um, this picture is very much more better. If you're a mesenteric artery, you can see here. Uh, okay, sorry, this is it here. Okay, I uh, could see that um, the branches are coming mainly to the what um, large intestine. Okay, 
so at least we are able to trace this one you could pause this video and try to trace the superior mesenteric artery you could pause this video to also trace um the celiac trunk okay so i think this is it guys for the blood supply to the uh, git let's go over it again we have the inferior mesenteric artery which is supplying some parts of the large intestine we have the superior mesenteric artery which supplies the small intestine and some part of the large intestine and we have the celiac artery okay now the superior mesenteric artery occupies what unique position okay because it supplies bulk of the region which absorb which absorption takes place you know when uh, where the absorption takes place you know that the superior mesenteric artery supplies a small intestine so where the absorption takes place um you know that definitely there's supposed to be sufficient blood supply all right so that um your oxygen your nutrients and everything is insufficient okay so that's why it occupies a unique position okay talking about the superior mesenteric artery okay so now all the blood that leaves the git the pancreas the spleen okay is drained by the portal vein which carries it to the liver just talking about the venous drainage okay just know the portal vein all right and it's carrying it to the liver so in the liver blood passes to millions of minute liver sinusoids and finally leaves the liver by the way of the hepatic vein okay that empty into the vena cava of the general circulation okay so um the blood flow through the liver allows the reticular endothelial cells that line the liver sinusoid to remove bacteria and other potentially what harmful agent that might um, enter the bloodstream from the gut okay so this is basically just like um extra knowledge okay talking about um how blood goes to the liver and how it moves back okay but most of all you guys should know the artery the artery are supplied to the git and the venous drainage to the git okay so these guys um like to see you guys um see you off all right and um see you guys in the next tutorial bye for now